Fuck. <laughs> It's a big one today, folks. Considering pretty much all of my content has been about stuff that's going on on TikTok, that marvelous zoo of an app, I feel like it's not indicative of the hours upon hours I spend on YouTube. Like, I'm embarrassed of it. Extremely. And this week, I mean, it's only gotten worse. And honestly, I'm not mad about it. Because now I get to spend quarantine entertained by drama made by 30 year olds that's somehow more petty than my own high school drama. But I'm gonna be honest, it's a lot and it's hard to keep up with. So though this video is in Bart made to make me feel better about having spent days at a time trying to comprehend all of this drama, I'm here to break down the entirety of Dramageddon from start to what I really desperately hope is the end. All right, to begin, let's rewind back a year and two months to May 2019. The sun was out, Coachella outfits were finally over, and the coronavirus was still only being carried by bats. Remember seeing people's real faces? But vitamin D weren't the only vitamin people were caring about. See, May 2019 would soon be infamous amongst the YouTube community as the start of Dramageddon, known to me more specifically as the Battle of the Vitamins. For about a year up until this point, YouTuber and beauty guru Tati Westbrook had been promoting her newish line of hair, skin, and nail vitamins, named Halo Beauty Vitamins. This Halo, however, was nowhere to be seen on May 10th, on the fateful day that Tati released her 45-minute-long expose on fellow YouTuber and beauty guru James Charles. And it was immediately apparent to all of us that shit was about to go down, just like James Charles on that Ferris wheel. Allegedly. The catalyst for this video was when Tati's former, though I guess now former former, mentee James Charles uploaded an Instagram story on April 22nd promoting sugar bear hair vitamins. Vegan sleep vitamins. So if you guys want to check them out, you can swipe up. See, though James had already enlightened us with his outfits at Coachella the week prior, he had decided at the last minute that he wanted to attend another weekend at Coachella, but was only able to secure VIP tickets. These tickets did not provide James with the proper security a YouTuber with 15 million subscribers should need when going to an event as big as Coachella, and mobs quickly began to form. Yes, this is the life that we're living in now. In an attempt to gain more security, James contacted a friend who had attended Coachella under the more secure artist pass provided by Sugar Hair Bear. Sugar Bear Hair. Bear sugar hair bear? And he was quickly able to obtain artist passes for himself and his friends in exchange for an Instagram story. Which, thank God, because then we wouldn't have been able to see another round of Coachella outfits. Yeah, may maybe it would have been better for all of us if he had just stayed home. This promotion was problematic for a few reasons. Though I think we've all collectively accepted that all vitamins are kind of bullshit, sugar bear hair is one of the worst offenders, being made of, as the name would suggest, almost entirely of sugar without any actual nutrients, or at least very little. What made it worse, however, was that Sugar Bear Hair Vitamins was actually a direct competitor to Halo Beauty Vitamins, and James had, for a long time, been mentored by Tati. Thus, when James promoted her competitor, Tati felt betrayed, and she went on her Instagram story explaining why he had betrayed her and how she felt, though without naming any names. I feel really used. Everybody says what they need to say and, and uses who they need to use to get ahead, and I have had about enough. James then apologized publicly, but unfortunately for him, he would soon realize this would not be nearly enough. See, this is when, a few weeks later, 37-year-old Tati decided to upload her infamous Bi Sister video, on which she not only expressed her gripes with the whole vitamin situation, but exposed then 19-year-old James Charles as someone who manipulated straight men into performing sexually, which, ew. One of the examples she brought up was a waiter who had been serving at Tati's birthday dinner, about whom James made several sexual comments in front of her friends and family. When Tati informed James that the waiter was straight, Tati quoted James as saying, it doesn't matter, I'm famous, which, Ew. <laughs> this indicated another problem with James that she went on to explain in the rest of the video. That fame had gotten to his head, and that the sweet boy she had originally mentored had turned into a power-hungry egomaniac. Like, 
you know, most big YouTubers. This video was unexpectedly catastrophic, spreading to every corner of the internet, garnering millions of views. I think around 50 million, it's been deleted, and causing James Charles to lose over 2 million subscribers. I mean, even my chemistry teacher knew about the drama. Unfortunately, it only made me hate that class more. With how much attention the drama was getting, it was no surprise that just about everybody had something to say about the situation, including me. And obviously, that included Jeffree Star. If you don't really know who Jeffree Star is, I kindly suggest you click off this video because I'm only going to disappoint you. See, Jeffrey is, and always has been, the most problematic beauty guru on the platform. And honestly, he seems kind of proud of it. He's never not in a scandal, and when he isn't, he joins one that doesn't really concern him. And he's also made super racist comments in the past that somehow hasn't gotten him canceled. Win by having diamond rims, and you win by being a poor Mexican. Shut up, you fucking nigga, bitch. You stupid ape, I'm gonna spray you. Please beat that nigga. You're a nigga, ugly ass bitch. So of course, Jeffrey was quick to tweet about the situation, claiming that James had been banned from his house because he was that dangerous of a sexual predator. He of course provided no evidence, as always, instead saying that he had evidence but didn't want to show us because he didn't want to get involved in the drama. I am not going to give the world what they want. I was gonna pull voice memos, I was gonna pull old text messages from other people, my business is amazing. <sighs> In the following week, a bunch of fake allegations came out about James Charles being a sexual predator, and they've all been debunked, so I'm just gonna say, like, that is so fucked up. Like, it's disgusting. Because at this moment, the entire internet was teamed up against James Charles, relishing in this 19-year-old's business falling apart and crumbling at his feet like the drama-loving sociopaths that we are. This obviously took a huge toll on him and increased his depression, his anxiety, and even made him contemplate suicide. However, James would soon be in the clear when he uploaded his fantastic video, No More Lies, on May 18th, a 40-minute explanation and rebuttal with provided evidence and screenshots. In this video, James explained the sugar bear hair situation in full, showing ways Tati had lied about the situation, and showing screenshots in which he apologized profusely to Tati multiple, multiple times, and explained the whole situation to her in those screenshots. He also provided plenty of evidence showing that all of the allegations made against him were false. For example, that waiter at that restaurant he was by and actually DM'd James first to go on a date. If I'm being honest, he's the worst kisser I've ever kissed. Way too much tongue. All right, note taken. He also showed a lot of screenshots from Jeffree Star, and honestly, all of those were pretty disgusting, especially considering James was able to debunk most of it. This video was an even bigger deal, garnering around 51 million views and gaining him back all of the subscribers he had lost, and the internet was now officially on his side. If you're interested in the drama, I highly recommend that you watch the video. It does a very good job explaining and rebuting all of the stuff that was piled up against him. James builds a good case for himself, and I really do think he's strong for having been able to go through what he went through. Tati then apologized to James, he regained his following and then some, and that was pretty much it. Or so we thought. And this is where my head really starts to hurt. Don't get me wrong, it was already dying, but man, it gets confusing from here. Now listen, people have been bored during quarantine. And it's led me to believe that the coronavirus isn't just here to take lives. It's here to take careers. Throughout the last couple of months, as I'm sure you guys have noticed, plenty of people have been getting cancelled. As people have been watching old videos, reading old tweets, because people frankly have way too much time on their hands. So much time that they decide to make whole YouTube channels. Subscribe, by the way. <laughs> We're also in a political climate where offensive behavior is finally seeing negative consequences, rather than swept under the eye drop apology video rug, leading many people to be exposed for their past actions. So with this in mind, let's talk about why Dramageddon is still relevant. Two weeks ago, I think on June 10th, 
Cam Lester, beauty guru and former employee of Jeffrey's, released a video in which he exposed Jeffree Star's involvement in the Bi Sister scandal. In his own 30 minute IGTV video, because everybody on YouTube wants me to waste as much time as possible, Cam Lester explains the ways in which Jeffree Star would constantly berate James Charles, who was quickly growing at the time. He was like, do you like James? And if you guys know me, James helped me with my career when I first got into the beauty space and tell my HIV story. Like he's always been very supportive of me. And he was like, well, you don't fucking owe him forever. He even mentioned about a time when Shane Dawson had called Jeffree Star solely to complain about James Charles. And the two were just going at it, making fun of a 19 year old. And did I mention they're 30? After Cam Lester's video, on June 12th, the drama channel Ashley Kyle released a video in which she explained that she was on Jeffree Star's payroll. Now, what this means is that Jeffree had been feeding her over the past few years information about drama for her to be able to help her channel. She showed screenshots from 2019 in which Jeffree insinuated the coming expose on James Charles before Tati had even planned on making the video. He also insinuates that he and Shane both knew what was going on and had a part in making it. It's now that I'm going to mention that Shane Dawson at this time was in the process of filming his docu-series with Jeffree Star about the beauty industry, which I'll remind you had advertised behind the scenes information about Dramageddon in the trailer. It's been speculated that Shane and Jeffree felt threatened by James as he was doing very well for himself and proposed a direct competitor to Shane's upcoming palette. The rumor spread then that Shane and Jeffrey were directly involved with the Bi-Sister scandal to cancel James and make way for their own palette without any competition. My business is amazing. After these rumors spread, Shane then decided to defend himself in probably the worst way imaginable. Did he need to ask this many questions to himself? No. <laughs> God, it reminds me of like Ryan in the office in that episode where he tells Kelly how to like defend herself against the press. It's easy. You just turn every question around on them. Do you think you're treated differently because of your race? Would you ask that same question if I was white? And that was fucking satire. How are you? <sighs> it was just not good. People didn't accept Shane's. It's not even an apology, I don't know, statement? This is in part due to the fact that the apology was seriously and inconceivably bad, but also because videos from his past on YouTube were starting to come back to seriously bite him in the problematic ass. Blackface, inappropriate jokes about children, transphobic comments, and again, constant sexualization of children were commonplace on his channel. Honestly, it's disgusting that I didn't even realize the extent of it as a child watching his videos. He profited off of racist stereotypes and again, sexualization of children, and this is the first time he's actually facing any backlash for it. But I'm getting carried away. And angry. <laughs> Sorry, when I think about Shane, I just... <sighs> anyway, he then made an apology video, which was Again, absolutely terrible, and he apologized for all of his comments, but he stood by the fact that he had no part in the Bi Sister scandal. However, he did admit that he knew that the scandal was going to break before it happened, he just said that he didn't know the extent of it. However, a few days later, on June 30th, Tati finally released the statement we had all been patiently waiting for, in the form of another 40 minute long video. Though in the video, Tati is unable to show the evidence that she has as she is currently pursuing legal action, presumably against Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star, Tati explains the ways in which Jeffree and Shane gaslit her into believing that James was a sexual predator and danger to society, convincing her to make an expose video on him to cancel his career. Tati went so far as to claim that Shane offered to help on making the video, on the editing process, and even on making the thumbnail. Can I remind you that all three of these people are in their 30s? I've said that multiple times, but they are in their 30s ganging up on a 19 year old. <sighs> Tati goes on to say that as a victim of abuse herself, Shane and Jeffrey were able to manipulate her into believing that James was just as bad of an abuser and that he needed to be taken down a peg and to be taken away his career. I did not make my video because of vitamins. I made it as a result of all of the poisonous lies that were fed to me by Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. And remember those texts 
that Jeffrey had sent James? Yeah, those would have freaked me out too. So, though Taji is a responsible adult who is capable of making her own decisions, I understand why she was able to be manipulated. After Tati uploaded this video, Shane went live on his Instagram, pretty much freaking out about the video and yelling at the screen. He was pretty much screaming in disbelief, claiming that all of it was false and that Tati was being manipulative. As a victim of abuse myself, Oh my God. Terrifying. You are so manipulative. You're fake, you're fake crying. You are fake crying. You are fake crying. That is not real. Oh my God. Which sure, she didn't provide any evidence. We still have to see what will come out. But to be honest, I just think Shane is finally realizing that he is completely and irreparably fucked. Come on, does this reaction look like that of an innocent person? Because you mess in drama channels! Oh my god. Man, I'm, I'm all riled up now. Sorry this isn't really funny anymore. But fortunately and unfortunately, depending on where you fall, that's where the drama ends for now. There's new information coming out every single day on this situation, and despite the hours upon hours I spent on this platform, I can't even keep up. So I don't think I'm going to make a follow-up video on this topic unless something really big comes out. I think my brain deserves better treatment. Like, it needs a very deep massage followed hopefully by a forgetting spell. I hope you enjoyed the recap of this situation. I certainly didn't. Anyway, this is the end of the video.